everyone, and welcome to a sunny Leo Gang Salzburger land in Austria for the UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country Olympic World Cup. Third round taking place in one of the most stunning little corners of Austria you'll ever see. We kick things off today with the under 23 women's race, the third round. As I say, my name is Rick McLaughlin. Joining me in the booth is the original, still the best, Bart Brenchins. Bart, good day to go racing. Good morning, Rick. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Leokong. Uh, the temperature is still a bit uh, cool, I would say, but they expect 28 degrees for this afternoon, and especially here on this mountain, it will be feels even more warm. Well, here are your start lists then. Sophie Heavy Patterson leads the way. Sorry, excuse me, it's the overall standings from Kaluri. Madigan Monroe in 11th. Samara Maxwell in 12th. Zoe Cuthbert 14th. We would have expected maybe at the start of the year to see her a little higher up there. But we've had some thrilling women's under 23 races so far this year, and this one promises to be no different. Here are your top eight as they take to the start line. You can see Gina Kaluri there, bandaged up after a crash earlier on the weekend. Sina Van Thiel from Germany, the slider. Madigan Munro there for Trek Factory Racing Cross Country. Alongside her, Noemi Guarnier. Scott, yet to see the best of this young woman this year. It's today going to be the day that we see it. Noel Berry, Swiss star, one of many Swiss stars, I should say. Here is the woman who is lighting up 2023 in the overall points leader's jersey, Sophie Heavy Patterson. <coughs> Absolute domination from her at the last round in Lenzerheide last week. Ronja Blurtlinger, Live Factory Racing, the pre season favourite, the Swiss national champion. And Someone who uh, could do with coming up with an answer to the question that is Sophie Heavy Patterson. There is your start list then. Blurtlinger, Patterson, Burry, Garnier, Van Thiel, Kaluri, Baum, Monroe, Cordenovis. Cordenovis could go well here today, Bart. Plenty of climbing out there. Yeah, this course has a lot of climbing. Uh, it's an old school climbers course. That first climb, it's more than a kilometer long and it goes up all the time. But they have to do a start lap uh, first. Bart says old school climbers course, I say absolutely miserable. I've ran it three times now and that's enough for one year. Just, you really cannot get your head around how much climbing there is out on that lap proper until we see it. But Bart says there's a start loop to thin the herd a wee bit before they head up into the tree line for the first time proper. And it just keeps swinging at you, that climb. It is, but the conditions are perfect because it's dry. Yeah, we had a lot of rain um, on Friday, two big, big showers, and then both downhill and cross-country courses have baked in the sunshine ever since, and uh, it's actually done them both a world of good, I think. The cross-country courses will look out the window, a lot of lines burned in now to the grass sections, which should make it slightly easier going. I say everything is relative, of course. Let's get the under-23 women, under starters' orders then, they'll wait for the lights. It's red lights on. We'll wait for them to turn green. And we are racing here in Leogang at the third round of the UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country Olympic World Cup for the under 23 women. Sophie Heavy Pedersen on the number one bike in the red and white jersey in the center of your screen leads them out onto the start loop. Blurtlinger's in fourth wheel. Yeah, a very strong start again uh, for Sophie Peter Heberson. 
And that star lap uh, goes a little bit different, so not uh, entering the tech feet zone. They, they skip that in the first star lap. Yeah, the purpose of the start lap is just to thin them out a wee bit before heading into the single track section, just to make it a little safer and make sure that we're not sending eight riders wide into a one rider wide trail. Zoe Cuthbert there in the pink jersey, I can see, sitting about seven for eighth now. Yeah, it's similar to the short track, what these riders have done uh, last Thursday. The best 40 has done it uh, last Thursday. Tough short track as well. Yeah, a lot of climbing go. was involved of that as well. Uh, Runja Blochengang, she won uh, the short track last Thursday. Yeah, Blochengang super, super strong in that short track. But it is a number one Villiers bike of Sophie Heavy Pedersen, as we are now used to seeing it in 2023 out in front. Yeah, and we have seen here in uh, Leo Kong uh, more often uh, yeah, riders that took the double in short track and uh, also then winning uh, cross country. So it means uh, short track has a lot of climbing involved too. And a uh, lot of climbing in the short track. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but we, we saw some great races. Oh, some fantastic yeah, races. Yeah, it um, was very tight till the end. Uh, very exciting to see. I'm with my average mountain biker's cap on the off camber long grassy turns that's what you want to ride and that was so fun. still a bit slippery because we had the rain earlier yeah. this week but uh, since yeah, yesterday it was very dry all immediately with the sun out and uh, now again um, I, don't, I don't expect any slippery parts on this course jenny risford's of course coming off in the elite short tracks on one of those turns this section's lovely as well these two turns so this is the start lap uh, the riders uh, are doing at the moment yeah, just difficult to find space at the start of these uh, cross-country races to be able to actually attack little sections like this, but this track really is, I cannot underline enough, straight up, straight down, straight back up again, straight back down. <laughs> it has a lot of climbing. That's, it's, like a that's cap it's like a capital M. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is like that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, also from uh, around the start-finish area, actually, uh, that arena, you can see riders uh, most of the, the whole track, actually. And uh, there's a, another tag zone. That's the, where the riders are right now, just uh, in case of something goes wrong. Uh, this is only uh, the second tag zone. So feeding over here is not allowed for the riders. No, but they can take on mechanical assistance should they need it. So mechanical assistance in cross-country racing can only happen in designated tag zones. This part of the course so so tough this yeah th this is uh, yeah the, the, the sun in the back and not, not at the moment it's not that warm at all but uh, it's a long uphill climb and it just gradually increases. gradually up yeah but uh, yeah it, uh, it will hurt a lot especially that last little bit of this climb it's uh, very steep and riders they can see each other for a long time um, mentally also a hard uh, part of the course uh, to do with because yeah it, it you it feels so slow because it's very wide and it keeps yeah it keeps pitching up and i mean it's a, i ran it the other day and it felt like by the top of it there you can see a better idea of the gradient by the top that last little kick it feels like you're moving backwards you're working <laughs> as hard as you've ever worked yeah especially that la the last feels uh, like let's say 30 meters and uh, just before the top uh, these are very steep it feels like you're moonwalking your way back to the pits it's that steep but um yeah well on these steep arrow straight sections, I mean, we saw a couple of Nova Mesa and Amarave at the start of the year as well. That is where attacks can come with. Some riders feel that they can force the issue. There's one little punch just up on that platform before the course turns right, which is absolutely soul destroying. But it's uh, Ronja Blocklinger with the number two on her bike, who is first here at the split time. So I mean, Peter Hippelson just after her. It's always a good time to win, Bart, but you get the feeling that today might be an important one for Blurtlinger. Just to break that momentum of Sophie Heavy, Sophie Heavy Patterson, excuse me, a wee bit. It is Sophie uh, Peter Heddelson. She's uh, very strong. She won the race um, in uh, Lanzerheide last week. But uh, yeah, I was a little bit surprised about um, Ronja Blochlinger that she could win uh, the short track. Of course, the, 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 yeah, the, there was a a strong battle in between these two who are leading the race right now but it seems uh, to be Ronja is uh, Ronja it's getting better and better every every week again yeah she looks strong at the start of this one 
I'm afraid, Bart, you're going to be doing most of the work today. My voice is absolutely shot to Since bits after the downhill yes. yesterday. <laughs> what a day of racing we had with the big bikes. But we have a big day in, uh, ahead of us. Uh, it's four a races. It's a marathon, not a sprint, this one. It is. It's a marathon, not a sprint, and I think I've left my shoes at home. But And this uh, little, uh, uh, it's more than a little climb, but uh, that's the new part of this uh, course here in Leogang as well, of the Cross County course. It's very steep. Um, and it's also very loose, so it's difficult for the riders to find their grip on the rear wheel. So riders, they have to sit down out of the saddle. It's, it's quite difficult on this part, but it's an interesting section because on the, that highest point where they are right now, from there on to the finish line, it's yeah. uh, very difficult to overtake each other. So there's a lot of turns involved. We have that off camber section where the riders will uh, come uh, very soon when they're entering the ski slope. And then a few uh, wide turns on the grass on high speed and afterwards uh, some big jumps and a lot of corners still the finish line. That is one of the things I was going to ask you about today, that the surface of this course here in Liegang, it's the gradient's super, super steep, but the surface is often very, very loose. Is it quite difficult to balance the input of power to get the bike moving properly? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, Also, loose gravel, it's very hard to find your grip, especially on the rear wheel when it comes down to climbing. And also in, in cornering as well, loose, loose gravel in, uh, on your front wheel. Yeah, it's, it, uh, that's very slippery. Yeah, good fun whenever you're out for a mountain bike ride, but not what you want whenever you're racing. Blurtlinger just throwing a bit of style in. And you see the dust is already coming. Yeah, fast start for Ronja Blurtlinger here. Why is that, Bart? Well, we see it a lot in the cross-country races. Riders just throwing the odd whip and throwing a bit of style whenever the the wheels are off the ground. Is that just a fast is fun, fun is fast? Yeah, sort fun of? is fast. I think also they like uh, to play around uh, on their bikes. It's and good for the sponsors, <laughs> isn't it? Get you more photographs. It is, it is. And uh, especially now, the, the young generation is growing up with more jumps and drops and all these technicals, uh, technical features in a race. And um, yeah, j they are just enjoying riding their bikes and they're showing that on... Uh, Maybe shows your rivals as well that you're, uh, you're feeling good today. It's, you know... Here we go then, start loop completed then. Blurklinger, Pedersen, Monroe, Bury, Cordenovis, Van Til, Maxwell. So now they are entering for the first time the Tech Feet Zone. So uh, this is the original lap, what the riders have to do four more times. I would have expected to see Kaluri slightly further forward, but it's early days yet. The young Swiss woman, very, very capable climber. And we had sort of uh, circled this race as somewhere she might go well earlier on the season. Uh, at the, here at the, the Tech Feed Zone, there are three different lines. Actually, uh, let's say it's like a, a transit lane, uh, the, the fastest uh, lane for the riders. If they, have a, if they like to have their nutrition or they like to have to be cool down with water, that's the feed lane. And then there's also a technical lane. So it's well organized. And back on that big climb. Yeah, here we go, out onto this climb properly now for the first time. Sophie Peterson now, who's taking the lead. And it looks like it's going good for her. She's not struggling at all. I would be struggling if it was me out there today. Four it's laps. I, I actually think I could get a bike around here once, but I think you'd be doing well to get me to do a second lap off it. I've done a couple of laps, actually. I know you overtook me a few times. <laughs> when you were running. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good course to ride, but yeah, it's, it's very steep on some of the sections, and I we will see later. Um, th this is a, a very steep part as well. Luckily, that is not, not that long, but you can see Sophie Peter Hebelsen already is uh, getting away a little bit of Ronja Blocklinger here when they doing this climb for the second time, where they turn right at the moment. Over there, there's a little bit more flat, even it goes down a very little bit, but it goes up immediately, so there's no time to recover at all. I was surprised, actually, Bart, um, how how choppy the descent is here. You you spend a long time climbing, and it feels like you just turn left, and then it's quite a st quite a steep, rough section. Yeah, but which, also immediately, huh? So uh, yeah. it's it's there's there's no flat part in between the no, climb. No, to relax, and, get a breath, <laughs> and nah, uh, going down. down straight down. And actually, the the riders they have to do a lot of things on their handlebar. I mean, drop a seat pose down, they have to shift uh, gears, uh, 
yeah. well, we'll fingers on the brakes um, immediately. We see with Matthias Flukiger on the elite men's um, side of things that you know he's injured that thumb and he's had to recalibrate where all the different levers on his handlebars are. Now, if you're new to cross country mountain bike racing, the actual controls of the bike, the handlebars, very very busy places. You've obviously got your two brake levers. You've got two levers to control your gears up and down. You've got it, depending on the system, another couple of levers to control the suspension platforms on the bike, whether it's locked out for climbing or whether it's wide open, and then another lever. Yeah, or well, like a, tra a, trail, a trail mode you have yeah. with, uh, with uh, I suspension used to, as well. I used to have a bike that was it was called traction control, the middle mode. Oh, it, it, it didn't, uh, get much <laughs> more, didn't get much more traction out of it, but. Yeah, and a lot of electronic uh, yeah, is involved these days too. The, the SRAM uh, yeah, the shifting at AXS, yeah, uh, that's all Bluetooth. You can just see it on these different handlebars where covered in levers, more levers than a forklift truck these days. And these, uh, these riders, this caliber of rider, you're operating them all like a Formula One driver without even thinking about it. Your thumbs are yeah, just busy it, the it, whole time. Yeah, just it's all automatically what they do with their hands. And, uh, they are not looking to the handlebar at all. No. It's, it's all on, on feeling, and if you change something, yeah, it goes immediately wrong. Well, I chatted to Matthias yesterday. Um, the elite men's race coming up later on this afternoon. He's going for a hat trick of wins here in a row in Leo Gang, and he said uh, the last round in Lenzerheide. He said, "Imagine telling a rally driver at the stage start that all three pedals did different things." <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <He> said, like, <laughs> that would be dangerous. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is dangerous. And he said that's what happened um, last week. He said, uh, if "Whenever shirt are attacked." He he went for a lever that was the wrong lever, and he went down two gears as opposed ah, to locking the suspension out. Okay, so. yeah, 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 yeah. So um, very very busy places to be these cross country race bikes. As we see Sophie Heavy Patterson, yeah, just making rolling. her attack and yeah. overtook Onya Blocklinger already at, in the beginning of that climb. And this is even not halfway that uh, first climb of the course. You get the feeling as well that Blocklinger will just have to cancel this one out because this was what happened. Last time out in Lenzerheide, Sophie Heavy Patterson was allowed to get away from the group and she never looked back. And this is the first descent of the course. Sophie Peter Hepperson is taking it precisely, no problems at all for her. Two different lines, riders can take over there. I wouldn't say A or and B line, it's just another option. Uh, actually, also the, the, the first uh, lane down, it has a few uh, turns in it. It's even, yeah, it's, it's difficult at all. It's difficult as well. And they come uh, together at the bottom. Actually, on high speed, what, from what I think, is quite dangerous because, yeah, they, it's difficult to break over there and give some uh, space to each other. Sophie Heavy Patterson, though, this looks like an attack that is sticking so far. Looking good here, the Dean. Yes, she's riding away. This section, uh, helpful part as well, because I guess you can gauge visually. How far up, far ahead you are? And it is, but oh, it's no sign of Ronja Blurklinger. 28 seconds now. Yeah, on only one climb. On yeah. only there she is there, and she's by herself as well. Four seconds up the road from Samara Maxwell. So it's a strong ride for Samara Maxwell. Sammy, it's her nickname. She likes to call Sammy. She said. Samara Maxwell from New Zealand. There she is. Kortanovis in sixth behind Noel Burry. Noel Burry third in the short track on Friday evening. Ten seconds back off the winner, Blurklinger. But a bit further back this afternoon so far. This morning, sorry, excuse me. As they head into the woods, now you'll see how things turn choppy very quickly. So there you go, you're getting your breath back, and it turns left. Get down that. A very technical descent over here, as you can see, a lot of roots. I was going to lose gravel. I was going to say it's just like an old downhill track, the sort of width and how beaten up it is. But I guess that's because it is an old downhill track, is why it resembles one of those. But real choppy, full of holes, and then this nice little fast section through the trees. Fantastic shots from the drone. Yeah, really taking you around this course here Follow, in Liga. Following the riders in between the trees. And then they're coming back actually here to the arena, not not that far down. You can see they the stay height. a bit higher than you can uh, normally. See still pretty high up there. Yeah, and after they have done that little flat part, it goes right, and then they have the zigzag climb to the highest point of this course. Sophie Heavy so climbing again has found five seconds between the top of that climb and where she is now. The young Dean. 
for Villiers Pirelli, really just starting to make this season her own, her own little fiefdom. A strong rider from Denmark. She won the Danish championships as well, but uh, Alena Degen, another strong Danish rider, she beat her. Yeah, we oh, talked about this last week. The, Caroline the, Alexander. The Danes are coming, aren't they? They've got some good riders these days. Yeah. Sebastian Finney Carstensen having a, a pretty good season as well. He's he was on the podium in Lenzo Haida on the short track. It's looking good for Sophie Heavy Peterson. So the elite women's race following on later on this afternoon after the 23 men's race. And yeah, we had a, a bit of history denied us there. Luana Lecomte won't be going for the triple double having not won the short track on Friday evening, but still won the favorites for the cross country Olympic race, wouldn't you say, Bart? I think so, <laughs> I yeah. agree with that. <laughs> you can see, I mean, the sheer amount of climbing on here just would suit the comp down to the ground, wouldn't it? She won here the last two rounds uh, the, the previous years. But her, her short track last Friday actually wasn't that good. No. I mean, she didn't win. Uh, another French woman did. Pauline ferrand in her rainbow jersey. But Lecomte, world champion. Lecomte so strong against Pauline ferrand in that cross-country Olympic race in Lenzerheide, wasn't she? she Ferran Bravo tried but, all. Uh, she tried all the mind games. But Pauline and worked. told us uh, she made a mistake with her nutrition. She oh. forgot that she didn't take her gel in the uh, penultimate uh, last uh, lap. Oh, it was. I didn't know that. And she ran out of energy. So um, that's what she said. Uh, and it's not, often, not often you hear that sentence used, is it? Ah, uh, if you are full racing, you're not thinking about everything, and sometimes even riders have to be informed by the, uh, yeah, the by, by the staff people to take their uh, nutrition, their drinks, because they are so focused of just giving everything. And she ran out of energy, and um, yeah, that's why uh, why she had to pay uh, for, uh, for for the win, and she, she didn't do it. Uh, it was Luana Lecomte who won. Here we can see a visual representation now off the gap at the front of this race, 41 seconds now. It's getting bigger. Pedersen from Blertlinger, and that climb with a 41 second deficit out in front of you will be absolutely harrowing. And Sophie Peterson also, her brother, Gustav, he will uh, participate in the next category, the man under 23, also yeah. a very strong rider, so riding for the same team. He needs to be as well, because that under 23 men's cross country Olympic race absolutely stacked with massive talents isn't it it is yeah especially even the the first few laps of their race they go almost uh, equal in, in 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 speed as the many lead do it that's actually uh, impressive how fast they are and as the formats of cycling get closer and closer i was actually told at the airport the other day that the the under 23 races plenty of scouts from the big road teams here as well it is yeah yeah looking for the future stars of the, it's, the asphalt. It's a good development for uh, any cyclist. Uh, if you start in with mountain bike, you, you, you become a strong climber, you have the skills of descending. Also these days, descending on the road, it's, it's a high, yeah, important topic, uh, what, what you need to have. It's not only uh, yeah, riding hard on your bike, yeah, you need to have the skills as well, riding in a peloton, that goes together. And mountain biking, uh, it's a nice sport as well to start for on a young age. But there's a lot of fun involved, a beautiful uh, area most of the time, like Leo Gang is. Yeah, stunning. <laughs> stunning if you're not working your way up that climb. Yep, it is a fantastic sport that um, I don't think there's any sport can beat it for fun versus fitness. The benefits of both. Samara Maxwell now. Second place has got past Ronja Blurtlinger. So Blurtlinger, I don't know, Bart. Maybe slightly too much climbing out there for her today. Yeah, I mean, she, it, there might be a little bit too much uh, involved for her, but she's still uh, on the third place, fighting for that second place together with, together with Sammy Maxwell from New Zealand. And here you can see how steep it is. The smallest gear they have pushing here. 
40, guess... 44 seconds now the gap so there's another three seconds gone the way of Pedersen I guess uh, these riders the front chain ring 30 or 32 oh look at look at Maxwell here looks strong Bart yeah, and you see her cadence, uh, how high it is, even on a climb like this. And uh, Ronja Blocklin, she's struggling with the speed of uh, Sammy Maxwell. Pulls her in towards the top of it, but it's a little too late. Meanwhile, at the front, Sophie Heavy Patterson takes a look. Where are they? Probably uh, they are not in vision. So this is uh, where they changed the course a little bit from last Thursday. They took out the first jump. They said it was too dangerous, the speed was too high if they should leave it in. Uh, especially, the, they came in with too, ma too much speed for the second jump, ah, okay. which makes it too dangerous. And also, there was a, a lot of side wind earlier this week. Yeah, it has been gusty here this weekend. As I say, on Friday, it absolutely dumped it down, not once but twice. I courageously hid in Bart's pit with Cedric Gracia and drank coffee whilst the rain came down. And, very welcoming it was too, but yeah, look, we arrived here in Leogang at the start of the week and it hadn't rained for some time and both the downhill and cross country tracks were running so, so fast, but we're getting so, so loose and then, as I say, Friday, Friday brought the rain with it and I think it's actually done both tracks the world of good. Now here is a tech feed zone. So uh, Sophie Petter Hebelsen now uh, entering the feed zone, the feed lane, as you could, could see, there, there she is. Gets a bottle. Took a bottle. And then back on the track again. Three different lines. Transit, feed and tech. Talk us through those then, Bart. Transit, feed and tech, what are the differences? Um, if you don't uh, need anything, so no nutrition, no bottle, no gels, uh, and also no technical support, then you take the transit lane, that's the fastest lane. Uh, the feed lane, that's the one uh, for, for on riders perspective uh, left of the tents, and technical support, that's right of the tents. So these riders both uh, not taking anything, uh, no gels, no uh, bottle. Ponya Blocklinger and uh, uh, Sammy Maxwell, they don't need anything. They taking the fastest lane and uh, yeah, gain a few seconds. It's a little bit faster. Well, all those seconds add up at the end of a cross country Olympic distance race. Maxwell now 49 seconds back behind this woman, Sophie Heavy Pedersen, out on the lap two. Clean Hoyle from Great Britain in 11th. Behind, behind her, Boehm, Wiedemann. Ah, Zina van Thiel Zina van Germany. Thiel's come to join the party at the front now as well. Yeah. She's ridden herself across there perfectly, Bart. Oh, strong ride. Good climber she is. Riding for the Lexwehr team. Samara Maxwell, maybe not just keen to let that place go just as easily as that. Well, and Ronja Blocklinger, she's suffering with a high speed now at the moment. It must feel horrible, Bart, when you're out there and one by one riders are yeah. coming past you and there's yeah. no answers coming. <laughs> there's no, yeah, that's the problem, there's no answer. If it, if it is on the climb where they are passing you, and you can see her expression on her face that she's suffering. And that is not an easy ride at all. Also, mentally, it's becoming harder. But, uh, a good ride for Sina van Thiel. Just seeing on our screens now, as on yours, that that gap is 52 seconds now. So Sophie Heavy Patterson has decided that attack is the best form of defense and has got gone at the front of this one. Different style for Sina van Thiel and uh, Samara Maxwell. Well, Burry is coming up. Yeah, Burry's quietly having a good season, Bart. Yeah. Another young uh, Swiss talent rider. rider, riding for the team from uh, Lukas uh, Flückiger, the team manager. Lukas Flückiger, of course, brother of Matthias Flückiger, who we will see in action later on this afternoon in the elite men's race, going for a historic hat trick of wins here in Liagang. Sarah Kortenovis now making her way up behind Madigan Monroe. Yeah, I think this course uh, must, must suit her. For Sarah Cortinovis from yeah, Italy. I did think She's a very strong climber. I did think that I would see her closer to the front than she is at the minute, but 
Yeah, already, maybe already, there's uh, still a bit of time to uh, ride into this course. I mean, there's not much time if you want to catch uh, Sophie Heavy Paris at the front of it, but maybe the rest I of mean, the podium positions yeah, could still come into it, view. That, that's still a vision for her. Madigan Monroe, she's leading that uh, chasing group, as we saw. But back to the leader. Here she Sophie is. Peter Hebbelsen. Here she is, yeah. The Looking highest point in that uh, on the first climb. Looking like she is out for a lap of her favorite trail center on a Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely but, uh, chilling. Believe me, this part over here, it's so oh, steep. Oh, it's horrible. Very steep. So no real altitude here with 800 meters above sea level or so. And Ronja Blocklinger with the number two on her bike. Noel Burry behind her, another Swiss rider. Obviously. And then we have Eugenia Calorio. So three Swiss together. And then that uh, bigger changing, chasing group that uh, Kortinova is leading. And Bart, being up in high altitude last week in Lenzerheide, I guess it's kind of neutralized by the fact that they were all there. Uh, yeah, I mean, they all have done a, a, a good preparation uh, to perform on, uh, on a higher level, on the altitude level. And it uh, seems to be also some of the riders, they even have their profit from altitude training and perform stronger here in uh, Leogang. Here we go then into this descent, and you should be able to see from this shot just, oh sorry, maybe the next one, just how steep it is. And this, yeah, this is a little bit of a, a technical trail, very narrow, from the highest point of the first climb till there the first go. descent. It in, is in the biggest cog they've got. Yeah, <laughs> this shows how steep it is. Also. Your front wheel always has the feeling to get off. Yeah, off, it's of the getting light. It, it gets, gets light. light. Yeah, and then, then it's very hard to, to control it's your bike. Of, it's one of the big differences with these cross-country race bikes is just how the geometry of them allows you to climb just unbelievably steep terrain. On an enduro bike or a trail bike, you'd be looping out backwards because of the because of the angle, but the cross-country bikes, the low handlebars and the steeper angles, you can really get your way as far as you can over the front of it on climbs. But at the time, that doesn't make it feel any easier. <laughs> it's steep for everyone over there. We've seen um, handlebar height go down a lot, haven't we, over the years in cross-country bar as well. Is that, that Nino Scherter was always a big proponent of the, the upside-down stem. And, yeah, I mean, uh, most of the riders, they yeah, have their handlebar compared to downhill riding much lower. Yeah. That's what you said. But uh, the, the last few years also, the suspension uh, became bigger. So more suspension, 120 millimeters of front suspension, which brings your your handlebar higher up as well. So yeah, that's also why you see such a negative uh, stem, like minus 20 degrees. Uh, yeah, it's really noticeable, isn't it? Yeah. And, and especially now these days, a lot of integrated uh, handlebar, so stem and, and and handlebar one piece together. Yeah, I I've seen a few bikes of that now as well. Yeah, it's, it's quite striking looking. Yeah, it's almost common at the moment. Uh, so uh, how quick it <laughs> changed. I'm time. an absolute <laughs> handlebar nibbler, just in terms of where it is and it, it has to be perfect. Yeah. I think if it was integrated. No, you are not the only one. I'm not fast enough for it either. I think you got to be pretty fast if you uh, if you're going for the integrated handlebar bar. Yeah, if you have integrated handlebar, yeah, there's there's nothing actually what you ca can change no. anymore. And that, that's yeah, that's no you part. have to you have to adjust your your wrists or your own body to it. So what Bart and I are talking about the handlebars themselves, they feature a bit of backward sweep towards the rear of the bike, and depending on where you roll them in the stem can really affect where you sit and stand on the bike and how the front end of the bike feels and the the one piece stem and bar oh, oh, oh. 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 from Thiel. I think she well, Ooh, she lost the front wheel on the road. Not a nice one, but she largely got away with it. I think she slid quite far there. Luckily it was a, a, a good one. See a good that crash again. And you can see the yeah, front, front end. wheel yeah, on that road. And she got the hands out in front of her quite quickly, so could have been a lot worse. Not ideal for Van Tila, but... Yeah, this this part, it's, it's, it doesn't look that steep, but it is very steep. Yeah, adrenaline spiked as well, and then you spend the next 10 minutes going, where am I bleeding from? And riders might be lucky that it's dry at the moment, so actually, it shouldn't have been a problem for her, but she went down. Samara Maxwell was second place at the moment for her in that zigzag climb. Yeah, Blurklinger has kept Maxwell in sight here. Yeah, she finds her rhythm back. 
looks like. Still in vision in second place for Ronja Blocklinger. Noel Burry behind her. I think Burry could be dangerous here, Bar. Yeah, it's looking strong. Benjenia Calori, she's coming behind Noel Burry on the fifth place it is. It's one of those horrible little really compact climbs where you arrive into the woods and you look up and you can see how high you've got to go in quite a short distance. Yeah, quite a short distance, especially the hairpins. These are very steep in between. There's a little bit of time, I wouldn't say to relax, but at least the, the, the tension on your muscles, on your, yeah. on your in your legs goes away a little bit. A little bit. A little Everything bit. Everything is relative <laughs> in cross-country racing, but so getting, it, the, getting the bike turned on one of those uphill hairpins, like turning a brass band, it feels like. But Pedersen out front by herself, as we're getting used to seeing in 2023. Perfect ride for Sophie Peter Hebersen. Yeah, she's she's getting a, she's getting quite a habit of these perfect rides. And this is another steep section, another steep descent. Yeah, I mean, for all we say about uh, how steep and difficult this place is, the descents are good as well. Look at that. I mean, the, the climbs are long, but also the descents are much longer here compared to uh, Landsrider, for example. And there's a little bit of time actually to recover here. There's, there's more time. Riders, most of the time, they like to have it uh, to have these little bit longer descents as well. So there's a little bit more time to relax. Well, and also to make time up sometimes in a descent, if you are strong in that. That two-stroke engine noise, as we see, Blocklinger. Yeah, Noel Burry overtaking Blocklinger just before the descent starts. Giving Maybe she knows that she's faster. Yeah, that two-stroke engine noise you just heard, not actually from the bike of Sophie Heavy Peterson, although you would be forgiven for thinking it, given by how far she is out now. One minute ten to the good, but from the course bike, leads the way to make sure there's a, the course is clear for these riders each lap. There is a second tech zone. Long hot day for those mechanics standing in the sun. I'd have yeah. an umbrella with me. That's not a not the perfect conditions for them and hard oh. uh, for them too. I'd have one of them big umbrellas with the tassels. And, yeah. yeah, compared to the first uh, tech feed zone, then it's awful to stay on the second one. Uh, I just always, tech. I remember field reporting from Mont Saint Anne for years whenever there was there was always really bad radio feedback, so I had to have my earphones wedged into my ears. I had white noise at full volume to be able to hear anyone else, and I'd probably had a couple of beers the night before, and it was in the bright sun, and it was the most miserable experience <laughs> you could ever have. But these riders in a little hell of their own up this really arrow straight climb, Bart. Sina von Thiel now on sixth place, so she... It's on her bike again, trying Psycho to find her rhythm back. Psychologically, a straight climb, quite hard to deal with as well. Whenever you're, whenever you're turning corners and you've always got something to aim at, it distracts the brain, but straight this line. One. Yeah, this one is a hard one. Luckily, the riders are close together and uh, they, they motivate each other in, uh, in different ways, of course. Some are suffering, some are getting even more uh, power. Like uh, Samara Maxwell now leading this chasing group. Samara. Well, very second place. Samara Maxwell just watching her there, not unlike Alessandra Keller on the bike. Lots of movement of the upper body, but makes it work for her. Yeah, and she's very light and a good climber she is. And now on that uh, almost that steepest part of this climb, the last bit, the split time. Here it is. Well, Burry, oh, yeah, blocking off coming in. And you have Gina Carlori from Switzerland. There she is. So 34 minutes gone on this one. On lap two out of four. And this is Sina von Thiel. She had that crash in one of the descents, but luckily she didn't hurt herself too bad. She's back on the bike. Sophie Heavy Sixth Patterson. place. What a find she has been for Villiers Pirelli factory team. Looking forward to seeing her in the elite sport at this kind of performance. At least she became a uh, national champion in the elite category. She beat uh, Marlene Degen and uh, Caroline Beuye. Um, yeah, I, I'm wondering actually how it looks like for Denmark, for example, for, for the Olympics. I mean, she's riding in the 23 category still. If she's able to qualify in this category for if it comes down to Olympics. So can you qualify 
from the 23 World Cup category into it Olympic. depends the National Olympic Committee oh, okay. that's that's based on a national uh, qualification so it's it, that's not regulated by IUC or UCI that's that's for each nation uh, it's different so some take the highest ranked rider of the UCI ranking but some have to do uh, like for the Netherlands I know they have to qualify to uh, riding in the top eight of the, in the elite category so that, that's different for everyone well I am of course not a member of the Danish Cycling Federation but I would say if Sophie Heavy Patterson keeps on turning in performances like this they would have to take her and of course what Bart was talking about as well excitingly enticingly the reason why we will see the likes of Mathieu van der Poel at a UCI World Cup fairly soon yeah Mathieu van der Poel participating for the first time at the World Championships uh, later this year beginning of August and Glenn Tress in Scotland the first time that the UCI World Championships has brought all formats together, all disciplines together, under one roof. Sammy Maxwell leading here in this descent, the second place, the drop of seat goes down, she has. And that course in Glentress, in Scotland, in the Scottish borders, absolutely stunning looking. I think, um, I think it would suit the man himself now. A lot of handmade sections I heard yeah, about it. Yeah, a lot, and big as well big handmade section technical well. technical yeah oh, is it Ooh, interesting just one of the one of the best places to go riding mountain bikes the scottish borders beautiful country yep not oh, bad oh, hopefully the weather is good oh it doesn't matter by the way what about the, the, the black flies are they still there or? no they're on the west coast you're safe oh really you're safe oh. yeah they hang out on the west coast the midges oh the midges yes yeah i you remember don't these from uh port william when oh. we had cross county over there yeah no they're out west they're fine okay, okay as long as they don't all get the bus through <laughs> for the for the world championships will be okay yeah Sophie Peter Hebelsen on that climb again, the first climb of the course. A minute 15. And now it's time to take their gels for the riders, to take their, their energy drinks. The bike number up for Sammy Maxwell. That is not comfortable at all. Not taking any bottle here in this lane for them. Probably in the, yeah, the, the tech feature actually continues after this turn. Of course, the tech feature for the tents, with the tents, is just for the elite teams. So let's see if the riders entering the tech feature zone for the UCI teams or national federations. That's, that's this part of the course. And they are doing that. Yep, so a lot of the federations bringing young riders out here to try and support them and to help them find a, a professional berth on a team. Especially in the younger categories, yes. Uh, these riders have a lot of uh, support from national federations. Mountain bike racing, like, it's no different to any other sport in that so much of being a professional is just race time. It's just race craft and learning the processes of the week, learning how to deal with the psychological side of racing and how to keep cool, calm and collected whenever the lights go green. and. These young riders, the more racing they can get, the better. Yeah, and also riding on courses like this, that's what they have to learn. Not the easiest courses in the world. Absolutely not the Genia easiest Genia Carlori course. now is coming back to that chasing group, fighting for the second place, overtaking Runja Blocklinger here on this climb. I told you, I told you we'd see more of Kaluri today. I'm not going to be that dude who says I was right, but I was right. And I mean also like, not such a good short track on Thursday doesn't mean that you have a, a bad day on Sunday too. No. Sometimes riders are struggling mentally uh, with, with, a, with a bad result in short track that, you, that they think also that the cross country will go wrong or not, not in, in the way they like to see, but it has absolutely two different disciplines, different kind of riding, intensity. But short track, it's short and cross country it's the longer version and a really really energy sapping short track race here as well yeah and also much more tactics involved you have to go flat out from the start till the finish uh, and here yeah you have to deal more yeah with your uh, 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 how to say yeah you have to be more trained to, to, to deal with your energy systems um, there's more in cross country 
Short track is really high intensity racing. Yeah, intensity is high as ever here in the under 23 cross country Olympic for the women. You can see Samara Maxwell with her uh, face very close to the handlebar to bring some more weight on the front wheel. Oh, staring, at that front, staring at that front tire. Yeah. <laughs> well, Burry, similar position, also flat position with her upper body on the bike. Lurtlinger just looks like she's turned a bigger gear than everybody else, and it, it doesn't look like it's but working. It's a very steep part, this. Yeah. I think she's out of energy, out of power. Four, four laps. Alarm bells ringing for Blurtlinger. Suffering on this part of the course. Here we see Fontil. Looks still good after a crash. Yeah, Sina Van Til. Difficult to put a crash behind you and re press the reset button. Get back into that rhythm again, but she's in sick for the minute. Sophie Heavy Patterson. Well, we always knew that she was going to be one of the favourites for this race, having a super strong year so far, but we haven't seen a performance like this yet. A minute 17 away from Samara Maxwell. Sammy Maxwell now looking like she's trying to break the elastic band back to Noel Bury. What? Oh, a mistake over oh, there. And you see how steep it is. And just as I said that, Bury can close a couple of bike lengths again. But stay clipped in. She did. Look back over her shoulder. Two more riders with her. Virginia Calori. Riding for the Thomas Across team. That's the, uh, the development team of the team from uh, Alessandra Keller. Mateus of Ralph Neff. Yeah, Ralph Neff. Spending a lot of time. It's it's something that I sp haven't spoken to Nino Scherter earlier in the year that it's really ingrained in those senior Swiss riders that they they have a, an almost like a duty to bring through the next generation behind them. And Ralph Neff working, look at this great shot behind Sophie Heavy yeah, Patterson. With, uh, with the drone following her here yeah. in this descent in between the trees. Beautiful. You can see there's a good bit of speed involved there as well. She's yeah, making this yeah. look good. But technically, she's also very, very strong. Very strong on her bike in this descent. No problems at all. Not afraid at all. No. Nope. Very composed. And that is bike time, isn't it? Whenever you can descend that comfortably, it means that you can recover as well. Yeah, and it is a good bike setup. You have to trust your tires, your suspension, the whole bike. It helps a lot. And that's what uh, mechanics spent uh, a lot of time uh, to prepare the bikes and that in. in Together with the rider, of course, the rider have to give the feedback to the mechanics. It's interesting, actually, we're seeing the two worlds kind of cross over, aren't we? And that as the cross-country courses have become more technical and this young generation of riders become better and better at descending and on those technical sections, we're starting to see the more downhill style sort of attention to detail with suspension setups and... Yeah, also, most of the cross-country riders, they go around with the telemetry... Uh, yeah. Yeah, a computer system to measure everything and then uh, to set up the suspension. That's, uh, well, that's it, like it's downhill, cross country, races can be won by fractions of a second and like motorsport, that just means attention to detail and setup. there's no more just... Yeah, and also, I mean, the, the tire pressure, for example, or the, the, the tire choice, what they do, it comes down to, uh, yeah, a hundred of uh, millimeters in bar difference, which changed the whole setup of the what bike, the, the whole feeling. What was it you told me last week? You had 40 millimeters of suspension travel and 20 millimeters was sag. <laughs> Back in the days. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, forks no. sitting into its travel by 20 mil. Yeah, but even yeah, back in the days, the forks didn't work as they do now. No. I mean, also the, the service, well, what they do, uh, the maintenance, what they do on, on the suspension There's these days, they, they clean it completely before every race again. There's nothing better than getting on a bike with freshly serviced suspension. Yeah, it no, feels it, it, it feels so much better. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I had mine done recently and it was a thing of absolute beauty. But, but the days like this when it's sunny and the course is dry, 
it saves so much extra work because yeah. when it's raining and when it's muddy, it's it's uh, these are hard days for the mechanics. At they the, are hard the days for the mechanics. <laughs> yeah, and it's the same as uh, in the UK. You know, it's there's I forget what the equation is, but you know, for a two-hour bike ride, there's one hour of cleaning and tidying. Yeah. And, like, for every two hours, you get an extra hour on the tidying up and cleaning and riding kit and everything. Yeah, just absolutely no, it got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas that, in yeah, the that's summer, what cycling is. Uh, oh, mountain biking. Yes, yeah. The, uh, it needs a lot of uh, maintenance. You know, to, 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 to keep your bike in the perfect condition. A lot of people like. I like it as well. It's a, it's a part of the hobby for me. Is, is yeah, I think I think it's very important to to do it. Little glimpse into how tragic I am there. One minute twenty six now. Gaining Noel, time. Noel, Noel time. Murray has got past Samara Maxwell for New Zealand. But interesting, the chasing group. Yep. There are Burry, Samara, Maxwell, I would have thought, Genia, Glory. I would have thought Cortanovas would have been up in amongst this, but she's in 12th at the minute for Santa Cruz Rock Shocks Pro Team. Ella McLean Howell is having a good ride in 11th from the UK. Yeah, Sina Fantil, she was uh, yeah, on the second place before she had that uh, crash. She's at the moment sixth. I'm wondering uh, what she can do. Close with uh, Runja Blocklinger. Fighting for the fifth place. Madigan Monroe in seventh place, two minutes and ten seconds back. Yeah, Burry, one minute 28, still with Samara Maxwell. Kaluri just behind them for Tumas Across, Young Stars. Ronja Blurtlinger. Maybe today is going to be about damage limitation for Blurtlinger in terms of the points for the overall. There is Kaluri, an attack now. Yeah, different line, taking it more inside. Blast bit, past steeper. Maxwell. She's having a great year, Kaluri, isn't she? Good. Yes, she has. Plenty of factor 50 applied there in the, the tech zone beside the track. And well. it's, it's good when you have like a, a development team and like a, a professional team, let's call it like that, and then riders can can join the professional team if they perform really well, well get, in the I development part of team. It, I guess is you get used to how to live like a pro. Yeah. You get to watch Matthias Flugger, yeah. you get to watch Alessandra Keller, yeah. how they go about their business. Yeah, you're being at the races on the same time, even you have the opportunity to go around yeah. uh, together and you can learn a lot in a short time. Not to go to the downhill parties on a Saturday night before the race. <laughs> the party that was uh, threatening to keep Bart Branchens awake last night. It was uh, very loud. Very, very loud. Like, but let's face it, we could have predicted that one. You didn't need a crystal ball to predict that. What a day of gravity racing we had yesterday with uh, double wins for Austria. If you haven't checked it out yet, go and have a, a look at the highlights. It's amazing eh? that like, um, the riders' hometown races that they perform yeah, exceptional, uh, actually, um, a valley hole as she did and uh, and you don't want to you don't want to i don't know you don't want to get too deep into it bart but weekends like that they can just and they can just inspire so many young riders i mean you yourself oh, like, yes. from, from holland of course we saw puck peterson at the start of the year emotional win yeah you know, but also like, yeah, like if you become an olympic champion as i did a long time ago i mean it inspires so many yeah. young the new generation yeah and that that's also what Switzerland does all the time uh, with Nina Schurter, for example, Yolanda Neff. Uh, yeah, the, the development of young riders from Switzerland, it's incredible. Uh, it's not, it's, it's not only the, 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 the heroes what they have, but there's also the structure of clubs, uh, the, the trails, the, yeah, the, the races, the series what they have, their own series. But that's also in, in, in downhill. Uh, if yeah, you have two in, in both category and win a World Cup in your own uh, country, uh, th that's incredible. Absolutely huge, isn't it? And I know it's not just one result that can do it, but it can certainly inspire a lot of people. Let's see how Gina Kaluri then, on the outside, just tapped it on past Samara Maxwell. And coming back uh, to this uh, hometown race later on in the women's category with... Uh, yeah. Here for Austria, yeah. <laughs> the Mona and Laura Stiger. Laura Stiger, yeah. Yep. They are both able to win a, a World Cup. Mona Mittenwalner, I just get the feeling we haven't seen the best of her yet this year. She never won a World Cup, but uh, first row start she has later today. She had a very strong uh, short track. She celebrated like wild as she crossed the line in the short track. Means a lot. Means a lot getting on that yeah. front row. So host Sophie Heavy Patterson now, 1 minute 24 to the good. This is a chasing group 
battling for the second place. Sammy Maxwell now taking the lead again. Tinia Colori on third place and uh, well Burry fourth, but close by. And this is your leader coming back to the start finish area for the final lap. Just taking a bar. I think it's a gel. A gel, sorry. But uh, yeah, the nutrition. The nutritions are very important also for these riders. You mentioned even that, if you are leading. You mentioned that even the best in the world, Pauline Ferrambrevo, last time out said that she forgot to yeah. take her gel. Yeah. Whenever your brain is processing having to work so hard as it is in the middle of a cross country race, something as simple as taking a drink or taking some food, it can just go out. Especially, of your mind. I mean, I mean, a drink most of the time it's it's not a big problem, but, but a gel or yeah, some food. Yeah, you just reminded me to have a drink now. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, that that's that's where you have to remind the, the riders about it all the time. Kaluri just being careful not to collide there with Samara Maxwell on those. Yeah, different lines for both, but uh, interesting when it comes down to the final lap. If they are still on these positions, and then if Sammy does the same, taking that inside line a bit faster, Tina Kaluri took it a bit more carefully, but she lost the place. We talked about this a wee bit last weekend, Bart, but Sophie heavy Patterson, is it, is it mentally almost more difficult to be by yourself? You know, if you're in a group of racers, you're trying to get ahead of them, you're thinking all the time, your brain's got stuff to do, whereas out the front, on your own. Yeah, but she can ride her own rhythm. Huh? That, that helps her a lot too. I mean, she can hold back a little bit on the climbs, even not giving everything. And these three, they are fighting all the time go over the limit, which costs so much extra energy. And you can slow each other down as well, can't you? Yes, yeah, yeah, it is. And that's why you also see the positions uh, changing all the time. I think Noel Burry, she's very strong in the descent. So we saw that, uh, that she was overtaking uh, Ronja Blocklinger just before the descent. Riders, they feel exactly in which part they are stronger, where they can gain time or where they will lose time. So that's why they like to be in the first position on some of the parts of the course. And I think like now, Gina Caloria, uh, she's uh, taking the transit lane, not not uh, the tech feed, so not taking any gels anymore for the last lap. Keeping a good eye over her shoulder there as well to see what the other two are up to. You see, it's just a few seconds faster. Yeah. But, uh, you get a nice exit from that tech feed zone, don't you? So up on this climb for the last time, the chasing group then, this is where the action is going to come from for second place. One minute, 26 seconds now behind our leader, Sophie heavy Patterson. There is Van Teel. Sina Van Teel, yes. She's got past Blurklinger, who's in sixth. Madigan Monroe having a good day for Track Factory racing behind them. But the most important thing right now in our focus has to be this battle for the national champion place. in the 23 from the USA. I'm guessing, Bart, if you start on that front row, you don't want to finish outside the top eight. Yeah. <laughs> and it helps so much. Yeah. Not, maybe not here in uh, Leogang, because the, here the, the, the climb starts immediately and it's wide, it's open. So even a, a second and third row start, it, it's still good. And, and even you are, are able to overtake uh, the riders in front of you because it goes up immediately. And yeah, but definitely for Mona Mito, well, well, what we already said before, she was so happy with a good result in the short track, starting from the first row. Yeah, we will see a lot. From means her. a lot, means a lot. Gets a clear run out in the left first corner. Helps you establish yourself at the front of the bike race early on. And as we saw with Matthias Flukiger at the last round in Lenzerheide, the psychological side of being able to see who you're racing and being in close quarters with them. Once that gets broken, very, very hard to get back. And that steepest part. From the first climb, Sophie Peter Hebersen. So Noemi Pan, Emily Johnson, and Flavi Guil round out the top ten. We haven't seen much of them, but this battle for second place is warming up now. Where is Noel Burry? She got dropped by these two. A little bit. Yes, He's Sammy. had the numbers two and three in the race. Sammy Maxwell and Gina Kaluri in the red jersey. Maxwell in the colours of New Zealand. And there is Noel Burry. 
coming on the fourth place. So Burry needs to get back to these two if she's got any hope of getting second today. But you can see these are fighting hard. You can see the surface there, Bart, as well. Actually, it's loose. How, how loose it's it is. Loose, Very yep. difficult to climb on. And there's a little bit of time here where they are right now to, to relax. You can see it goes slightly down, but then immediately it's very immediately steep. Immediately it kicks back up super steep when they turn left here as well. Yeah, that's, that part is very steep. I always forget about Narrow. that when I'm, when I'm halfway around there. You think, well, that's it over. And you go around that left-hand corner and it just kicks again at you. Yeah, but if you blow up too early in that climb and you have to do still that steep part, you will yeah, you are easily lose a lot of time. And also from this part, entering that narrow single track on top, which is a very technical part as well. It's, it's, it's not easy to do that on your highest heart rate you can reach. No. Nope. And when you are suffering. But no problems for Sophie Hevelson. Sophie Patterson, sorry. Yep, she's one minute 23 out in front. But as I say, the, the, real, the real fight is going to come between these two, Kaluri and Maxwell. Who is your money on at this early stage, Bart? Oh, <laughs> we have seen uh, Ginia Kaluri. She was uh, very fast in that uh, second loop a couple of times. But uh, Sammy Maxwell was overtaking Ginia Kaluri when it came down to the technical parts, uh, taking different lines. Yeah, equal in strength, I would say. It's hard to call, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Sorry, I put you on the spot there, but hard to call between these two. Yeah. They've both been super impressive today. But as you say, Kaluri's had the, the better second half of the lap, she'd have to say. And she's in contention, just keeping Maxwell honest up this first climb. Yeah, Sammy Maxwell last year under 23, so she has to ride Elite next year. For Kalori, another year in the 23, so maybe a little bit more experience for yeah, Sammy. Maybe a bit more race craft. Sophie Heavy Patterson perfectly through that really choppy second. And here you can see again, uh, she's quite strong in the descent, uh, Sammy. Yep. Just a few bike lengths, but also you have to leave a few bike lengths in front of you to have clear vision. New Zealand, one of the big mountain bike nations. You, you couldn't throw a stone down there without hitting an extremely technically gifted mountain biker. And not always the easiest uh, for these riders from Australia and New Zealand to, big. to be here in, in uh, Europe for such a long time, I mean, it's making so their living oh, over here. Here, here goes Kaluri. Kaluri now past yeah. Maxwell and looks like she's attacking. Yes, yeah, strong on the climbs all the time. Here is Noel Burry on the fourth place. Even it's still possible for her. Still a long way to the finish line. Yeah, it sounds it sounds really naive to say it, but we travelled to Tasmania earlier in the year with the Enduro World Cup, and it really, any time you do a journey like that, it brings it home, the commitment levels of these riders, the New Zealanders, the Australians, that come to race in Europe in the summer. Just... Yeah. The, remo the remoteness from friends and family and yeah, home. Yeah, but to go back and forth all the time uh, with uh, the time differences, it, it's, it is impossible. And also, they have to make their second living over here uh, yeah. if they like to do all these World Cups in Europe. And that's what Sammy Maxwell does as well. Unless you've got a private jet like Josh Carlson. You can do it with your feet <laughs> up in a dressing gown. Martini on the go. I'm joking, of course. He doesn't drink martinis. Maxwell right up to the back of Kaluri. Yeah, interesting, this battle in between these two. Good to see that. 125, the gap is still there for Sophie Pedersen. So steep, that left-hander. And in between, a little bit... Time to recover, but the hairpins are very steep. And also a lot of roots here on that section where they are right now. Yeah. Hard to find your rhythm. Yeah, the cap actually uh, stays more like the same, but that's also because this battle is really going on. And for uh, Sophie Petter Hebelsen, it's quite consistent how she's riding. The gap is there, looks good for her. No pressure from behind. 
And as you can see her also her cadence on the bike is still nice and smooth. She just looks calm and in control yeah, at yeah, all times. She never control. looks, even when she attacks, she doesn't look rushed or hurried. No, or no, no. It means also that her level is, yeah, outstanding. Psychologically, Bart, what does that do to you whenever you've got a rider in the group that's winning the races by over a minute? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean that she will win uh, the next round again on a different course, but uh, must yeah. be tough to live with, though. Sorry, it's it must be tough to live with. You're training as hard as you can. Yeah, you're eating yeah. right, you're sleeping yeah. lots, and, and there's still somebody out there who can just put a <laughs> minute and 20 seconds into you. Yeah, but there's also maybe yeah her her age or uh, her development on a younger age. But yeah, she's definitely uh, one of world's best riders uh, in her age category. Yeah, special athlete. Yeah, she is. I mean, being best rider of Denmark already on uh, such a young age, it shows yeah, how talented she is. Noel Burry then, one minute 35 back, so 10 seconds back off this pair, but Kaluri. See the battle in between these two. Interesting to see that, a, a small gap. Yeah, the alarm bells are ringing for Maxwell here a wee bit. She needs to close this gap down. It means a lot for them. Gina Kaluri so aggressive in the second half of the lap. But Maxwell seems to have closed it again. Yeah. She's ridden, she's ridden really strongly back to the back of Gina Kaluri. But also there's not that much time for these two to slow down because Noel Burry on fourth place, she, she's not that far off, only 10 seconds. Let's see, Sammy Maxwell likes to be back on her reel of Gina Kaluri and it's now again. And here we see, oh, they're still in vision. It's quite interesting, actually. And it shows it's more than a minute climb. It is a minute, yeah. It's a long minute. Yeah, a minute. It's a long 60 seconds minute, up there. A minute 25, more like that. They're coming, uh, yeah, they're coming back a few seconds, but I mean, yeah, the race is... Yeah, it's for the all first place, that's done. It's all done by the screaming, isn't it? Yeah, but this, the, the fight for the second place, that's it's a great still shot, in. Yes. Nice section of trail here, back ah, down. That, that top section over there, it's so nice to ride. That really nice gradient where it breaks off, it just feels like you're flying. Yeah, just yeah, nice yeah. And smooth. Some and nice jumps in it. Carvey. Flowy trail. This camera angle, actually, we'll have to keep an eye out for this during the elite races. It is deceiving. It looks like those three riders are together. There's yeah, there's a, like a, a ten, gap, ten seconds gap in between, a little bit more even. Yeah, nearly 15. Yeah, now you see how, how big it is on the climb, it even is so. Yeah, it's that, difficult that for Noel Burry to close that gap. It gives you the true angle of things. Behind Burry, then, that is Zena Van Til. We saw that crash earlier on, Madigan Monroe. I can tell you, Ronja Blurklinger is now back in eight, three minutes behind the race leader, so her afternoon not going to plan, but still inside the top 10. Yeah, she won the short track last Thursday, but today a different story. Here we go then. If Sammy Maxwell is going to want to get second place, which she will, she's going to have to do something about Virginia Kaluri quite soon. Noemi Penn from France, actually on sixth, sixth place. Yeah, going well. Yeah, really I'm impressed strong. with Van Tielbart as well. That was a a crash that although she got away with it it will have affected her rhythm good oh, maturity to ride herself back into steady the ship and get into fifth now the last climb for these two and that, that is an off-camera corner so riders they're going wide next to the fence just to get a bit of support to get the bike straightened up before the bottom of this and Hudson this is time. just a long sprint to the to, to the top of that climb yeah as we rejoin the leader from there on it's very difficult to overtake each other but this is your leader almost at the finish line almost at the finish line a day's work nearly done for Sophie Heavy Patterson, and it's been that dominant. You think that she could almost go change the jersey and head out for the elite women's race as well? <laughs> She's looked superb all day long, the Danish rider. Yeah. We thought we'd seen the best of her in Lenzerheide. We were wrong. This is the best of her. For Villiers Pirelli factory team, an absolutely superb display. She's rolled off slightly, 
Kaleri now 111 back, but that maybe is more representative of how fast they're having to travel for that battle for second place. Well, she went early again. She pushed hard again. And again, it is going to be Sophie Heavy Pedersen who takes the win here in Leah Gang at the third round of the UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country Olympic World Cup for the under 23 women. The celebrations can start for the day in. One of the most dominant performances we have seen from any rider all season. But here we go. The battle for second place is really reaching its zenith now. Yeah, that's an interesting battle. Samara Maxwell leads. Ginia Kaluri nails that final tabletop. It will come down to a sprint finish between these two when and they the, have done the bridge. And there isn't much room for a sprint here either. No, it's very short. Very loose gravel as well, so all action. But it's all on high speed, so every corner, every s single. Kaluri has done well to close back onto the back of Sammy Maxwell. Oh, oh nah. she lost all the speed. She lost all her speed by trying to inside that turn, and it, it might be enough. It might be enough for Maxwell here. Sally Maxwell grits her teeth and digs deep and sprints for the line and takes second place ahead of Ginia Kaluri. In third place for Tumas Across Young Stars. Great to see two riders enjoying the battle. Happy anniversary to Nana and Pop Pop. I hope they've got a bottle of bubbles open to celebrate that one. Fourth place then. She's been good today, but not in amongst the thick of the action. Noelle Burry, fourth place for her. Yep, two Swiss stars on the podium so far. Zina Fantil. Zina Fantil, as I said, she has impressed me. She had that crash early on, but managed to right the ship and bring the bike home for fifth. Hopefully she didn't hurt herself too bad, but it seems to be she's still good and able to ride. Continue her ride. Fifth place, she's in. Mental toughness, just all important here in cross country racing as ever. There she is. Zina Fantil. With a big smile. And it can be as rewarding that bar, can't it? A crash in a race that doesn't go to plan, then you just come back and perform. Yeah, and she's happy with that. So, I mean, yeah, sometimes a crash is part of racing. Yeah, and if it's not too bad, and it didn't look like that, so. Robin's racing, Harry. Run your Blurtlinger. Two minutes, 48 back. Hangs her head, not the result she'd have been hoping for today, but she is home in sixth place and that win in short track on Friday evening. And Madigan Monroe, seventh place, the US champion in the 23. Noemi Penn Good from result France. for her, yeah. yeah. This is all right. Plan. Emily Johnston from Canada. Good Coming ride in. from Johnson as well for Trek Future Racing, a squad designed to bring in these young talents. Garnier in 10th, rounds them out. And then Cortinovis. Cortinovis. Just Expected out of the top today. 10. Expected more from her today. Yes, but definitely, yeah. But also her short track already wasn't that good. No. Ellen McLean Howell. Good result for the British rider. Yeah, the young British rider. She is first year in the 23. And here we go. This feels like weeks ago. <laughs> such such has been the, the dominant way, performance. Yeah, the way how she overtook uh, yeah. when you're blocking on, uh, for the second uh, lap on that climb. Uh, she just went. She just she ran away. Faster. Cruised her, did her own speed the whole the whole race, and made it safely. And I would almost say easily to the finish line. But what a ride for. Sophie Heby Pedersen, congratulations. A water win. Hey. Leo Gang. You were in a world of your own there. You pulled away early and you not only you extended that 
lead. What was your strategy going into the race today? I was actually a bit nervous before this race because this course is so different from the two first World Cups. This one is brutal with a lot of climbing, so my tactic was actually to go a bit slower in the beginning today, today but I just felt very good and yeah, just to get away and uh, could just pace myself for the whole race. The rhythm was there, the momentum was there. I mean, was there any point you thought, I'm just going to take my foot off the gas for, you know, just to take a step back maybe a bit and get my, catch my breath? But no, you just kept on going. You looked so good out there. Yeah, just if you feel good, it's, uh, yeah, you, you can just keep going and keep the flow. Yeah, I'm just super happy. Three out of three World Cups now, and yeah, it's my first year in Villa Pirelli, so it, I'm just super happy with my start of this World Cup season. Yeah. And you have reason to be happy. Congratulations, Sophie. Thank well, if you've got the flow, you can just keep going. That is what Bart and I are going to try and do today as we get ready for the under-23 men's race. The, the chaos that often is the under-23 men's race. But let's have a look at how Sophie Hemi Patterson won her third World Cup, cross-country Olympic World Cup, I should say. Yeah, she was uh, like the other two uh, races as well. Very strong again on a different course. No from to Namorav we had first and then Lens rijden last week and here in Leo Gang, an old school climbers course. But also for her, it wasn't any problem at all. She ran away, she overtook Ronja Blocklinger on the second lap and had a ride on herself. But what a ride it was. No problems at all. Her own rhythm. She was enjoying the whole race. She's in a great shape at the moment. Yeah, never Outstanding, I would say almost. Never looks rushed never looks hurried you heard her in the interview there cool calm and collected yep and she knew as well it, it should be a, a hard race but it didn't felt like that what we saw yeah. <laughs> well sophie happy patterson getting the business done in the under 23 women's cross country olympic world cup third year for her we get ready to go racing with the men's under 23 race as ever anything and everything probably will happen during that one extremely competitive field but yeah a very interesting category we're just getting ready and we will see her brother back as well or the brother of uh, sophie Peterson. he must be under pressure Gustav. He, yeah, Gustav yeah, yeah, yeah. must be under pressure <laughs> <laughs> to come equal with her. I'm sure he doesn't need any more of it, but he must be under pressure in that household. <laughs> the trophy cabinet's filling up and they're not his trophies. <laughs> Here we are, confirmation of the results then. Sophie Heavy Patterson takes the win. One minute, eight seconds, but that is uh, flattering for the rest of the field. Samara Maxwell, superb in second place ahead of Junior Kaluri. Sarah Cortinovas, 11 for Santa Cruz Rock Shocks Pro Team. Zoe Cuthbert in 17th, the Australian. Tamara Wittmann from Austria, the first Austrian rider. Yeah, Austria had a big day at the downhill yesterday. They'll be hoping for some results from their cross-country athletes today. A beautiful venue as well here with oh, this shot. Absolutely stunning, Leogang, Salzburger land, epic bike park. Samara, what a race. Fantastic uh, performance from you. Congratulations, you finished second here in Leogang. You worked your way up from 13th. I mean, how did you do that? Um, well, I don't really know. I guess I just focused on getting a good start, using the first start lap to make my way through places, and I just kept telling myself, like, just keep working, never settle into a group, and just try work your way through the field, and it just next thing I know, I'm crossing the line in second. Tell us about the battle with Ginia because you were really playing cat and mouse there. How were you able to really kind of pull away on that final lap and cross the finish line second? Uh, I think I made my decisive move up that last little steep pinch. I think I was just a little bit stronger on the really steep stuff, but she carried speed so well through all the technical stuff. Um, and it was amazing riding with her on the last lap. She was like, let's go together, let's push. So yeah, she was, I beat her because of her help pretty much. She, she was an amazing person to ride with. So yeah, it was really cool. Great to hear. Congratulations. Thank you so much.
There we go then, Bart. A bit of uh, teamwork. Yeah, teamwork. Different teams, but motivating each other for the last lap for the best result. And uh, teamwork making the Sammy, dream work. Sammy uh, Maxwell, she uh, won it at the end. Junior Kaluri then. Clearly a born racer, someone who enjoys digging deep and pushing hard. Third place today, but great result for uh, Maxwell. Junior, congratulations. You finished third here in Lea Gang. It was a very tough race. Just tell us about the battle uh, you had with Samara there. Yeah, it was really cool to battle with, with Samara. Actually, I'm so happy because in the morning I felt so bad. I decided that I will start five minutes before the start because in the morning I vomited three times and my stomach was so bad, but I'm so happy that I tried and it, it was so good in the race. So how did you manage to overcome that? Well, actually, I don't know. I just took for lap for lap and then it went even better and in the end it was it was a podium, so happy about that. And it paid off, so congratulations. Thank you. There we go, just uh, yeah. a, trio, a trio of vomits <laughs> to start the day and then on to the race not, bike. Not the best preparation, <laughs> I would say, but yeah, maybe it's the, the, the nerves, uh, the stress. Uh. I think after that party last night, some of the downhill riders might be in a similar state of affairs, but they won't be jumping on a cross-country race bike anytime soon. Kaluri. So it only can go better for uh, Kaluri in the next time. Yes. When she's feeling good. She was superb today, really, really good. And good to hear that from uh, Maxwell, that, you know, the... The motivation was there between the two of them to work together and attack. So here we are, the highlights in. The rider in the red and white on the number one bike in the center of your screen, Sophie Heavy Pedersen. Immediately a strong start from uh, her, but it was Ronja Blocklinger. She could go with her for the first lap, but uh, when it came down to the second lap, yeah, she was uh, so strong. She rode her own pace the whole time. And we were talking about at this stage that Kaluri was deeper in the pack than we would have imagined she would be, and she came back through. Blurklinger had a dig at the front of it, but ultimately just too much climbing, I think, today. The legs weren't there. Yeah, we see uh, Ronja Blocklinger still uh, leading in that first lap. But uh, yeah, this course, so much climbing involved. It's not easy at all, and here we see the move from uh, Sophie Peterson. Overtaking Ronja Blocklinger, she wasn't able to following her, and she rode away on her own pace the whole the whole course, the whole race. Yeah, this was whenever she could still see the rider in front, but didn't take long for Sophie Heavy Pedersen to vanish at the front of this one. Little more than a memory for the riders behind her. The number one plate makes it a hat trick of wins in 2023. But the battle for the second place was on for the whole race. Ronja Blocklinger, she dropped back a little bit. She couldn't continue. Sammy Maxwell was in second place for a good dose of the race. Junior Kaluri worked her way one rider at a time across to her. This move round the outside established herself. Yeah, with three chasers for a long time, with Noel Burry in that as well. And Ginia Calori was looking strong too, even if, if, um, if she didn't feel so well this morning. It was Sophie Heavy Peterson who took the win again in the third round for the third time this year. In a great shape she is and leading. Absolutely top flight, a different class today. Sophie Heavy Patterson. Look at that, just stunning. Here we are then, here are the overall standings for the under 23 XCO women. Sophie Heavy Patterson leads the way by 127 points now from Ronja Blurtlinger who hangs in there in second. Junior Kaluri though is closing her down. Noel Burry in fourth. Samara Maxwell up in fifth now, ahead of Sarah Koronovis. Well, we're putting the mountain back in mountain biking. Coming up next, the men's under 23 mountain bike cross country Olympic race. One of the most action packed races of the weekend. As we get ready to bring our top three women onto the podium.
Jeannie Fleury, by her own admission, had a rough morning, but she'll have been happy to finish it on the podium. Third place for her. She seems quite happy with it far as well. It doesn't seem to be a case of a uh, missed second place. No, but the battle was quite tight. Equal in strength, I would say. It's Sammy Maxwell for the third place for her. A young Swiss woman. She just seems to enjoy racing, doesn't she? Yeah, and that's like, so what, actually sometimes also what brings the right feeling to you. Uh, that's what riders like to do. Racing, battling against each other, and then Great who's to see the that. strongest at the end. Great respect between these two after a hard-fought battle today. Samara Maxwell in the second place. Really, really happy with that. And of course, happy anniversary to her grandparents as well. Hope they're watching back home in New Zealand. Sophie Heavy Peterson then in a class of her own. A minute to the good that win today. But in reality, it was much more than that for much of the race. And also for Sophie, that nice trophy from uh, Salfelde Leogon. Yeah, really nice trophies here actually in Austria. Villiers Pirelli can celebrate. And she is really, really repaying their faith and signing her. Doesn't get much better. And for these riders, a weekend off next week, and then up to uh, Val di Sole in Italy. Val di Sole, a tough place to go racing on any kind of mountain bike. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. <laughs> we should get some champagne in the booth, you know, Bart. Cut loose a wee bit. We had last uh, Friday, yeah, we celebrate the third place of Martins Blooms in short track. Of course, Martins Blooms. Yeah, you, you have to, I eh? Didn't get, I didn't, you get, have I didn't to get the phone call. I didn't get the phone call to come and join you for that. Uh, one, but yeah, maybe but maybe this, this afternoon. I hope yeah. to see you this afternoon. Yeah, hopefully we'll see. We'll <laughs> maybe see you this afternoon. Uh, Is Martin's in good form today? Uh, he's, in a good, he's in a good form, of, uh, but uh, still they have to race. Here we go then. Here's confirmation of the results. Sophie Heavy Patterson, one minute, eight seconds out of Samara Maxwell, Junior Kaluri, Noah Burry, Van Teel, Blurklinger, Monroe. Pat Johnson and Garnier are your top ten. Well, whenever you win as many races as Sophie Heavy Patterson does, you tend to get this, the overall points leader's jersey, which she had before the start of this race. She's got a freshie for next time out in Val de Sole in Italy. It's looking good for her. And Val de Sol, of course, in Italy, that's the oh, home-based yeah. nation for the team. She's broken the zip on that one. Really so. Pirelli. Luckily, she has got a couple of them in the wardrobe. And now again. Yeah, home race next time out for the team. So there'll be a little bit more pressure there. But given from what we've seen from her today, Bart, shouldn't be a problem. She seems to handle the pressure quite well. On every different course so far, she won. Yeah, you'd have to say the most all-round package in this under-23 women's is. field. Yeah, she is. She's not only a strong climber, but also strong in, for example, Nova Mesta, where we have the punchy climbs, but here also with the longer climbs. Blurtlinger then, 127 points behind her in the overall junior Kaluri, 139 back. Samara Maxwell up in the fifth. It is heating up a treat here in Leogang, Salzburger land as we get ready to go racing for the UCI mountain bike cross country Olympic under 23 men's race. Well, thank you for watching our action for the under 23 cross country Olympic under 23 women's race. There was one woman out front who made it her own, and it was Sophie Heavy Pedersen, the overall points leader. Zia Van Teel had an off. Thank you for watching, and there is plenty more action to come here.
as we go cross country racing today in Leagan.